expectations. So no shit, we're running on four cylinders. He says we're it, running on three. On three, sorry. He says it feels a little slow. Come race day, it's already determined who's going to win. You can never ever change the course of uh, a race um, that is during it. Usually for the past week we've been starting to formulize and um, create race scenarios. Then we apply the best one we thought to this situation. So Oxford, we knew they're going to go out fast at the start. Um, we have to try to neutralize that. So we practice and practice and then it, we execute it and the coach reminds us in that morning. And uh, besides that, he gives us a pat on the ass and says, good luck boys. To get ourselves pumped up before the race, we'll wake up around 5.30, we'll uh, have breakfast, we'll go for a 20 minute walk around the house. This is every guy doing this themselves. And then we come back, we go to bed for another hour. We have to eat beforehand so we can digest. Then we start coming down to the boathouse. We set a time, we meet, we stretch together, we warm up, we run, we do our a little jog, five minutes, we go on the erg machines and we, we paddle for a little while. Then that's when it really starts to get serious. That's when all emotion, everything, you have to lock it all up. You start to feel a bit tingly, tired. The butterflies start circling in the stomach, so you have to line those in one direction and just trust in what you've been doing for the past two, three months of training. And then hands on the boat. And when it's hands on, it's all business from the time you pick it up to the time you put it back on that rack. When we had lost um, last year to uh, Oxford on the Thames River in England, uh, we invited them back to our home course. So there's a lot of rivalry, a lot of tension. We came back, the boys were all focused for the past two weeks. The eight really came together. We unified as a team and we had a really good strong performance as you can tell today. We beat them by a good 12 seconds. We had lost to them by about eight seconds last year. It was quite the change of tables. Just finishing that race was awesome. Seeing the crowd, the people, all the students, all my family and friends and supporters. It was amazing to share that experience with my teammates. Universe. The first runners up with a time of 549.6, Syracuse, 
And the winners with a time of 539.9, the University of Washington. Hi, uh, Ed Newman from Chicago. I'm doing uh, also doing modern Chinese studies. Hi, I'm Boris the Fever, also from the Netherlands. I do an uh, MSc in biomedical engineering. I'm Colin McCabe. I'm a sophomore from Brockville, Ontario, and I'm studying geography. I'm Anthony Jacob. I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. I am a junior this year, and I'm an anthropology major. Uh, my name is Hannes Etner. I'm from Berlin, Germany, and I'm majoring in psychology. Hey, I'm Tom Lehmann. I'm from Rostock, Germany. I'm studying mathematics, and I want to thank all the supporters of the Winnemar Cup and all the people that came out here today to watch some great races. Hello, I'm Mathis Jessen. I'm from Hamburg in Germany, and I'm studying geography. Hi, I'm Michelle Darby from Boston, Massachusetts, and I'm majoring in electrical engineering. We actually hadn't raced course. Syracuse this year. Okay. Actually, this is one of the strongest crews they've had in uh, maybe uh, 10 or 15 years, so we knew it was one of our stronger challenges. Oxford definitely was an unknown, and we went to England last year to do a pre-boat race fixture, which is a, a formal scrimmage before the Oxford-Cambridge boat race. We had a great race in the Tideway in London against them, and there was uh, three or four of those guys from that crew returning this year to race us. We knew they were going to be a really strong uh, com a competitor out there, and uh, they're just one of the biggest names in rowing. Intercollegiate rowing started with Oxford and Cambridge. We knew that uh, it would be a strong challenge. We definitely wanted to take control of the race, but we knew that had to be internal. We had to uh, perform and execute our race plan, have a good start, get where we wanted to be, and then come into a, a base rhythm that was powerful and long and uh, started commanding the race and taking control there. I've had an amazing time coaching these guys here. They're really fun. They're actually quiet and humble. They're down to the work that we need to do and that's been really fun to coach. They also respond. We ask them to give more. They can give more and uh, it's just exciting. We're not there yet. We have we have some work to do. We could do some really great things. We've definitely got a lot of Canadians on our team here at the University of Washington. Uh, we're only a few hours away from the border and uh, they mean a lot to us here and uh, a lot of people feel like this is close to home and we're really uh, proud to have Canadians here. The race goes by in a blink of an eye. You train miles and miles every day about. You're on the water for three or four, four hours, twice a day that is, and, uh, and all of a sudden the race is over in five minutes and 30 seconds. So you just have enough time to put that blade in the water and all of a sudden you come to the finish line and you hear the coxswain start to say, okay, start bringing it up, bring it up, two strokes, three strokes, and all of a sudden the, your, your stroke rate, which that is how many strokes per minute you take, goes right through the roof and, and then all of a sudden she says it's over and you can hear her voice and uh, she's excited and you look around and uh, then you realize you've won and it finally hits you. It's interesting having a, a woman coxswain in the boat. Michelle, yeah, she's always fun. She's definitely a girl and uh, you have to respect that. But nonetheless, she's a taskmaster. She drives us and if, if we start messing up, she will be the first one to tell us that's not right. She is almost the mini coach in the boat. She's the best coxswain at UW. She's proven herself by her race execution. She's cool. She's become like a little brother. When she gets upset, we can just tackle her or push her over. But um, other than that, no, she's, she's right on par. She's right what we need. We have to train for about two more weeks. Then we fly out to Sacramento for the Pacific 10 Championships, which uh, includes all those collegiate schools on uh, the West Coast. That'll determine who's the best on the West Coast. Two weeks after that, we train again. That's where it's all the marbles at the IRA National Championships. That's out east in Boston. This win. It's important, but it's also important to quickly forget about it and uh, become hungry again, because if, if you get complacent, then uh, that's where things become dangerous. You definitely, definitely have to always keep working. Ever since I came here to the University of Washington, they've really facilitated me well and developed me as a rower to transfer over to the Canadian Olympic team, hopefully, at some point in the future. I have one more year remaining. After that, I will uh, go out west to Victoria Island and begin training at Elk Lake. Once I get there, then again, it's another phase of my life. and. Uh, Hopefully I'll, I'll make a push for Canada and uh, try to represent my country at the 2012 uh, London Olympics. So um, these are all just stepping stones to get there and uh, University of Washington is doing a great job preparing for that as well.